show up in the morning and then see oh, Susan Werner. Susan Werner is near and dear to my heart. And thank you, Krista, and thank you to Bianca for sharing your truth and your words with us. I grew up as a Unitarian Universalist, and growing up, I learned stories about this faith. I learned stories of the heroes of this faith. I learned how Unitarian Francis David of Transylvania led the kingdom to embrace religious tolerance and religious liberty. And I learned how later he died in prison when the political winds changed and he was deemed a heretic and imprisoned for his faith. I learned about Unitarian Theodore Parker's ministry, his ministry in the North with escaped slaves who had journeyed North. And we learned, I learned about his leading role in financing the radical wing of the abolitionist movement. I learned about Unitarian Colonel Robert Gould Shaw. We even watched the movie Glory starring Matthew Broderick in Sunday School. We learned about Unitarian Susan B. Anthony and all the Universalists and Unitarians who gathered at Seneca Falls and led the struggle for women's suffrage and women's rights. We learned about Unitarian John Haynes Holmes, who has the distinction of being one of the original co-founders of both the NAACP and the ACLU a century ago. We learned about Unitarian Universalist Reverend James Reeb, murdered by the Klan on the streets of Selma in 1965 when he heeded Martin Luther King's call to come to Selma as a part of the civil rights struggle. We learned this testimony that to be a Unitarian Universalist meant to follow your convictions with boldness and courage. It meant being on the right side of history and being ahead of the times by a decade or a century. Those were the stories that I was taught growing up. Looking back, on one hand, I am grateful to have learned those stories. Though with hindsight, I'm now aware that most of those stories were about white men with Harvard degrees. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> but I'm aware now that women were in very few of those stories, and virtually none of those stories were told from the perspective and the agency of people of color. But more interestingly, what I learned, what I learned about testimony as a Unitarian Universalist was that if I had to tell my own story, my own story would be about efforts I supported, causes I joined, votes I cast, the times I showed up as an expression of values and principles. But there's another kind of testimony that I didn't learn to tell, an internal testimony the testimony of what is happening inside to me as a part of exposure to and being a part of this faith. The service this morning is about testimony, and when I talk about testimony, I'm talking this morning about the religious significance of the word, not the legal significance. We encounter this word all the time in the legal world, and we know what testimony means in that context. The news is filled with each day, news is filled each day with stories of who Robert Mueller's team has called to testify, to offer testimony to crimes that they've committed, to testify about what they knew and when they knew it, what they saw and what they did. But this morning I want to talk about the religious sense of the word. It's a word that on one hand is not mysterious. We know what testimony is. We know what it means to testify. In the religious sense, testimony simply has to do with speaking the truth, speaking the truth about one's own religious experience, about the significance that faith or theology or community or values or the church as an institution has held in your life and about how it has helped to shape your life. But it's also true that testimony is a religious word that we don't use all that often in Unitarian Universalism. Oh, we use the word in March during the annual pledge drive when we invite a handful of members to recruit them and we invite them to come up and give stewardship testimonials. 
about why they're inspired to give to the church financially. But perhaps it is a shame, perhaps it is a shame that testimony doesn't play some larger role in the life of this church. Testimony is a religious act. And it's a shame because I think there are plenty of testimonies. I know that there are plenty of testimonies worth giving in this room, in this congregation. There are powerful stories that we carry with us. I would dare say that each person in this room as I look out at the congregation, each person in this room has a testimony they might give. What inspired me to talk about testimony this morning was a book that came across my desk recently, a new book edited by my colleague, Reverend Meg Riley, in which she compiles more than 40 short testimonials by Unitarian Universalists talking about how this religious tradition has been transformative to them in their own lives. More than transformative, they talk about and write about how they've been saved by Unitarian Universalism. It's a rich collection, and let me describe just a few of the essays. Some people write about how their theological views have caused them to be scorned and rejected. But in one of our congregations, they have found a place where those views are respected. A woman fleeing domestic abuse finds safety, support, and healing for her and her unborn child in the community that she joins. Lesbian, gay, transgender, queer individuals testify to discovering a religious community that fully welcomes them as whole and as holy. Incarcerated people contribute essays about finding sustenance in the central message of Unitarian Universalism, that each person has worth and dignity, and that even our mistakes and our crimes do not separate us from the love of God. A bereaved person mourning a devastating loss writes of the care and support that she found in her UU congregation and how that came at just the right time and made all the difference. I want to read words from my colleague Meg Riley. I hope that you'll find them as powerful as I do. She says these words. She says, as an adult, I know it's just plain hard to be a human being and live a positive life. I know that all of us are vulnerable to illness, loss, being hurt by people we thought we could trust. All of us do things we wish we hadn't and have things happen to us that aren't our fault. All of us disappoint the people we love and betray our own deepest values sometimes. Some of us suffer in mundane or powerful ways because of systems of oppression and violence that were rigged against us long before we were born. Some of us struggle with chronic physical or emotional pain. Life is hard. But she continues, she continues by saying, my own salvation, to the extent that it's useful to talk about personal salvation at all, my own salvation has been a series of moments that have brought me closer to the person I want to be in relationships with people I trust embodying mutual values. She concludes, every day I forget how strong love is. Every day I sink into despair about this precious planet and the greed that is choking out life. And I begin to believe that there's no way forward. Every day I need to know that I'm not alone in my struggle to return to love, to recenter myself in grace and in decency. Every day I need to know that I'm part of something much bigger than myself and that whether or not we can save each other and the planet, my tiny acts of faith do matter. So yes, saying Unitarian Universalist saves people makes many folks uncomfortable. But it would make me more uncomfortable if I hadn't seen it happen over and over and experienced it myself. Those words by my good colleague, Reverend Meg Riley. As I was planning the service this morning, I was inspired by that, by that powerful book. I began to 
think about, oh, I think I thought I might, oh, I might read some selections from it, but then I had the idea that I might invite two members of our congregation to offer their own testimony to speak about what this church has meant to them. And my thanks go to both Bianca and to Krista for their vulnerability and for modeling what testimony might look like. It occurs to me that I also have my own testimony to give. I grew up Unitarian Universalist. I did not discover this faith as an adult. I grew up Unitarian Universalist. But as I think back, as I think back to my formative experiences, it occurs to me, it occurs to me that most everything that I love most deeply about myself, most everything that I treasure most deeply about myself was encouraged, developed, gifted, brought out of me, kicking and screaming, by the Unitarian Universalist Church that I grew up in. Almost everything about me that I love is the result of having grown up in this faith. And the thanks for that go to ministers and lay leaders and the congregation as a whole and Sunday school teachers and youth advisors and the traditions and the hymns and the history and the stories of justice and the youth group and everything else. As I look back, though, as I look back, my testimony, my testimony is gratitude for my life going in that direction and not in another direction in which it could have gone. I give great thanks and deep thanks that I did not become the person I might have become. I tremble. I tremble when I imagine who I might have become without the guidance, the acceptance, the love, the care, the unconditional support that I received. Without the self-love Unitarian Universalist taught me and the affirmation it showed me, I might have become a worse person than I am. There are lots of people, young people of my generation, of earlier generations and later generations of every generation, young white men especially, who grow up with a distorted worldview, grow up to receive a toxic message of entitlement, a sense of their own victimhood, the cultivation of resentments, a deep and burning anger. These views often lead to racism, to misogyny, to homophobia, to solipsism, self-centeredness and selfishness. My faith, the religious education, the faith that I grew up in counteracted every single one of these messages. From that faith of my childhood, I learned love, acceptance, gratitude, a healthy understanding of self, a healthy understanding of sexuality, an awareness of my own agency, spiritual confidence. It was the greatest gift that I received. As a child growing up, I learned those great stories, and those great stories of those pioneers and exemplars and faith heroes, those are important stories, too. But even if we don't have one of those stories to tell ourselves, we do have our own testimony. We do have a testimony of a difference, a saving difference, an important difference. 
that this faith may make in our lives. So be it, blessed be, and amen. And I invite you to sing with me. We're going to close by singing number 131. Number 131, Love Will Guide Us, and I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we sing. Thank you.